It's a big announcement. Throughout this crisis, Olaf Scholz has been refusing to answer direct questions about Nord Stream 2 when questioned about sanctions, saying he wanted to maintain what he called strategic ambiguity. There's no more ambiguity. Nord Stream 2 is being used as a weapon of sanctions. And just to drill down into what this means, Europe gets its gas gas otherwise to what is called the friendship pipeline of all things which transits through ukraine having nord stream 2 would have allowed russia to turn off the gas through ukraine starving the ukrainians of gas and of that transit revenue billions of every of dollars every year that's no longer on the table they're going to have to continue if they want to sell gas to europe using that friendship pipeline filling the coffers of the ukrainians and this is a big change for the germans as well because uh, throughout this crisis they've been sort of espousing this policy in german it's called vandal durch handel which is changing things through trade will sort of soften mores if we keep talking another ostpolitik if you will and all of that seems to have taken a beating and, and being abandoned as germany finally lines up with the other countries that have been talking tough and takes uh, a strong measure of sanctions against Russia. Nick, uh, Germany obviously has a very key role to play in this crisis. The German Chancellor actually went to meet Vladimir Putin as well as the Ukrainian leader in recent days. Tell us a bit more about Germany's role. Germany has had a big role. I think that role is really going to come into question now. That was partly because, well, largely because of Angela Merkel and her 16 years in office, her ability to speak Russian, to get into the head space of, space of Vladimir Putin, to lead European sanctions after Russia annexed Crimea. And, and then Olaf Scholz sort of stepped into those very big shoes. And I think he's been finding it hard to take on her heritage, which included something called the Normandy format of discussions over the Minsk agreements. We've been talking about them a lot in recent days. They were to be the diplomatic instruments whereby the future of those two regions were be, to be determined. They're essentially useless now. Uh, once Russia sends, Russia sends in its troops, there's no more discussion to be had. So Germany's place at that table with France France, with Ukraine and with Russia really doesn't exist anymore. That was the sort of lead role it had. Now it's just another member of the European Union, albeit the biggest economy, uh, with a lot of weight when they talk, people listen, and a member of NATO and not one that particularly spends uh, much in terms of uh, GDP you know, ratios and so on. And one that, let's remember, uh, what prevented other countries from shipping weapons to Ukraine. So a role, certainly, it's a big diplomatic player, but it had a bigger role before, I would say. Okay, Nick.